How is everybody doing today? I wanted to do a little follow-up video based on the interview I did with Matt Kendrick, the CEO of Good Good Golf. Now, if you want that full interview, be sure to check that out. It's on uh, this video. Um, it's on my page here, so be sure to check that out. Link in the video description below. But I did want to follow up and address a lot of the conspiracy theories that are out there. And I wanted to give it some time, think about this, and get other information so that we can confirm, deny, whatever, all these conspiracies that are flying about the internet after my interview I did with Matt Kendrick about the good, good split with Grant and Micah, both uh, now not a part of good, good. So that's what we're doing here. Now, the top five conspiracy theories that are out there, we'll talk about those, then we'll talk about uh, why I think Grant left after you know seeing everything, reading everything, and really digesting all of it. Why do I think you truly left? And what's happened in January 3rd? I'm gonna give my insights on that. First and foremost, let's dive into the top five conspiracy, I call them conspiracy theories because they're just theories. I don't know if there's a conspiracy behind it, but it's probably, you know, it's a, it's a reach. One is people, a lot of people, probably number five on the list are saying that he, Grant left because of the Mizuno sponsorship. And then if Good Good releases their own set of clubs that he's got to deal with Mizuno and he didn't want to jeopardize that. I think that's ridiculous personally because even if you do release your own clubs and you have a deal with Mizuno, there's eh, you could work that out. There's ways around it. There's ways to work that out. You don't have to play their clubs. And many pros have club sponsorships and they use other clubs, okay? A lot of times they'll use a club head cover of let's say Titleist, but underneath it is a Callaway. There's all kinds of things you can do and I'm sure you could work out some arrangement with Good Good to make it so, hey, I know we're selling these clubs, but I gotta deal with Mizuno and they could work it out. Remember, they offered him the kitchen sink. So if there was some conflict of interest there, I'm sure that would have been in the kitchen sink personally. So I do not think that's the reason why you would leave. That would be kind of ridiculous reason to leave in my opinion. Next up is that, this is crazy, this is a crazy conspiracy, is that Grant and Micah are gonna team up and form their own band. Now, I, this, now they have been on social media in photos together and doing stuff since the breakup, but I don't believe for one minute that that is why you did that. You're not gonna leave, most people don't leave a, an ensemble band to, and, and join another one. You either go solo, that's all you do. You go solo, right? You don't join, you could collaborate with other people from time to time, and of course they know each other, so it would make sense for them to use their uh, resources to band together and do something together. So I don't believe he left with some conspiracy to start his own group with Micah. Like that just is not something that you would do. You would certainly get advice from, let's say the people in your life about your plans. And most, let's say, if he's talking to his parents, I don't think a parent would say, yeah, you should leave that group to join this group because being in one group is better than being in another. You might want to leave one group to go on your own, but I don't think you leave one for another because it's you're just making a lateral move. And it's not good business sense to just make a lateral move. You either want to move forward or sometimes you want to move backwards if it has potential to be a much faster journey forward. So I don't believe that at all, that he left to join up with Micah and form his own uh, new super group. No, that's a conspiracy theory. Squash it, forget about it. That's not the reason. Number three is this. <laughs> this is horrible. This is horrible. A lot of comments on my channel, everywhere out there, Reddit, you name it, is that Grant's wife or fiance is somehow the Yoko Ono of this situation. And she broke him up, pulling her guy out and saying, go on your, whatever. She is not Yoko Ono. She's not the reason he left. Remember, he, this, at the end of the day, his relationship with Good Good and everything he's doing there, was, it's a job. 
right? So he's gone a little bit. She could even travel with them. They could work that out and they can spend time together traveling. It's not like he has to stay in the same house as the rest of everybody else. He could spend his own money or work out again they offered him the kitchen sink so maybe he wanted to spend time with his wife like hey dude we'll give you your own apartment or your own hotel room with your wife so you can stay with her she could travel with you if i'm throwing out the kitchen sink these are things i'm throwing out there she can come so i don't believe for a minute that she's the reason he left and left good good that is if you just break it down and analyze what could be done to accommodate that situation, especially when everybody's saying they're throwing in the kitchen sink and offering so much, that would have been one of the things I would have offered. Hey, she can come. Let her travel with you. We'll cover it. No big deal. She's your wife. You're newly married or whatever the situation is. That would have been something that I would have offered to him. So I don't believe that conspiracy theory at all that that is why he left. Okay, moving on to next biggest, almost the top conspiracy theory out there is this, that there's some bad blood amongst uh, Grant and the other people in Good Good. Look, you're going to have disagreements and arguments with a group of people that are spending a week together, spending amount, that amount of time together. That happens all the time. It doesn't mean you break up with them. You don't leave them. You're going to have fights. You're going to have disagreements. You're going to have these moments that are challenging. And man, 99.9 .9 times out of 100, you could work that out. And if it's a workplace situation, which it is, then you're going to have more incentive to work that out, especially if you're all doing what you love, you're having a good time, and you can work out the, the, the situation. So let's say you're not among, around the person you clash with the most. Not that he's clashing with anybody or anybody's clashing at all. I would imagine that in that situation, the six plus editors and camera guys, and there are all these guys together, you're, go you're going to have, without a doubt, moments of tension that will happen a hundred percent of the time and people are just going to get on each other's nerves i get on my own nerves sometimes and i can't do anything about that right so we all can put ourselves in those situations and just say that happens and it ebbs and flows it comes and goes so you're not going to just leave a whole job just because there's a person or two or whatever that you don't get along with that doesn't happen, especially if you love your work. You stick around and you, uh, you deal with it and you're a grown up and you learn how to live and thrive in those environments. And remember, those things come and go. So somebody you argued with, at some point, something happens, you guys start connecting and become great friends. So that is a conspiracy theory that is just, in my opinion, kind of ridiculous. And the top... <laughs> conspiracy theory out there that is in, in my opinion just absolutely crazy because this is oh my gosh this is the conspiracy that somehow rick shields is involved in this grand master plan to get his tentacles in there and put some type of ticking time bomb in there uh in their fabric of their company of their group so that he destroys uh they call them a trojan horse like this is all ridiculous okay why would you do that first of all just first and foremost you're the largest golf content creator on youtube you have so much to lose if you're going to have some master plan like that. Like you could lose a lot. If people, if you did this and people were to find out and it came back that they felt like it would destroy, this would be horrible. What quicker, most worst way to destroy your reputation that that do this. And why would you do this? Because you're afraid of somebody taking over your top spot of subscribers. Again, Rick, 
Shields was recently on Bob the Sports Podcast and even talked about this. And Rick has talked about this in the past that when people come up and try to catch you, it inspires you more to work harder, to get more creative, to do better and better and better. So why? Why would you want to tear that apart? It'd be like you saying bold instead of wanting to run against the uh, the fastest competitor. He does a Tanya Harding and whacks the other guy in the knee. Like you don't do that. Well, some people do that, but I don't think Rick Shields is going <laughs> to do that for more subscribers or anything like that. So that he's not. He's not. Pablo Escobar, he's not the godfather where he's going to take out his competition. That is not going to happen. It would be more likely if some other lower, much lower channel did that so that they can have some other grand master scheme plan. That's more plausible. That somebody that you don't even know about did it. Like some company got in there underhandedly and ripped it apart. Like That's more plausible than Rick being some Trojan horse sneaking into their uh, fortress in the middle of the night and deploying his evil plan. That, it just is ridiculous. So we, let's get off of that one. Uh, <laughs> that is crazy. And then when you hear Rick talk about it, you know, he know he knows what these conspiracy theories are. And if somebody's lying about that, you would be able to pick it up pretty quickly. So that is absolute nonsense. It's It could be funny, like if you just think about it, but to even give it any level of credibility is ridiculous. So that is the top conspiracy theory about why Grant left, which I think is ridiculous. So here are my reasons why I believe now after the fact, after the interview, after everything else that has come about of why he left. And even though Matt Kendrick on my interview said, I don't know why, we don't know. I, this is what my um, thoughts are. I don't know for sure, and uh, but I have some just thoughts of like three reasons why I think he most likely left. One is this, that in the coming new year, um, that the schedule of Good Good would be ramping up. So it would require more time. That and whatever he did with GM Golf and the other channels. Like it would just require more and more time. And being that he's getting married and in a relationship, I don't think he wanted to give that much time up. So that's that could that could be potentially one of the main factors of why he pulled out of the group. Also, that his personal channel is kind of all combined together, right? His personal channel most likely started earning an income where it could support himself and his new wife, fiance, whatever, right? That it could support the cost of living. So now they don't necessarily, he doesn't necessarily need to be part of good, good to pay the bills. He's got his channel that can now do that. So why not? Why not just say, Hey, we we're making ends meet here. I'm going to just go all in on my stuff. And then that also ties into the third reason. And I think personally, it's kind of all three reasons. There's no, I don't believe there's just one reason. I believe it's probably all three of these and they're all kind of tied together in one is that it's more of a long-term play. So if he's doing his own channel, it's a, it, that's the long-term vision. So for his long-term vision of his career and his channel and what he wants to do with his life, it's going to be better, probably most likely better if you pull out and go on your own. So that's what I think he did is like, hey, we're making ends meet here. Am I going to be part of good, good forever? Like Bubby had mentioned in the podcast, like he's all in. He's a lifer, right? And there's guys like that. And that's great. That's awesome. And some guys can do that and other guys can't do that. And not one isn't better than the other. They're just different. So I think that Grant with his thoughts saying, okay, look, if my long-term play is going to be at some point I'm going to be out of the group. It's better to be out earlier rather than later. Now he's been there for the couple years, but now is kind of that tipping point. In other words, like if you're dating a girl and you are not going to marry her, why do you keep dating her? You know what I'm saying? Like 
A lot of guys are going to be breaking up with their girlfriends after this podcast. But that's the fact. If you're dating a girl for a year, I, I would even say for me, it depends on your age. But for me, it's like I'm married, right? But at the time before I got married, if I'm dating a girl for like six months and I don't see me marrying her, it would be over. There would be no reason to keep dating. It's a waste of everybody's time. I don't want, I have too much respect for you to waste your time. It's not that you're a bad person or I don't like you. It's just, I have too much respect to waste your time. So instead of him staying with good, good, longer and longer, just dragging it out, right? It's a respect thing. I, kudos to Grant for having the character to say, look, it's better to break up now than later. Cause then it's just going to get messier and messier, mess, messier, and it's gonna be harder. And it's going to, it's gonna be worse later than earlier. Let's just rip that bandaid off and get it over with now. That's why I think all of those reasons are the reason he ended up leaving at this point. It's the end of the year. Things are dying down in December. Let me, let me make the news now. And then we can all kind of kick off 2023 fresh, clean, single. That's why I think he did it. Okay. I don't think there's any conspiracy theory going on. I don't think there's any bad blood. I think it's all in the up and up and it's all legit. Now, January 3rd, a lot of people are speculating as to what in the world they're doing. Are they releasing clubs? Look, if they're releasing clubs, I think they could tell you. I think they could tell us that they're releasing clubs. Good, good. Right? We're going to release clubs on January 3rd. I, th that's not a secret. All right. Here's my theory on what it could it. It is. And some people mention this in the comments is an IPO, an initial public offering. That's when a company goes public for the first time. Now they wouldn't go public January 3rd. Okay. What they would do potentially, if this is it is announce that they're going to be a publicly traded company and that in a, on a future date, those, uh, that those stocks will be available for purchase by the public. So you would just announce on the third, Hey, we're going public on March or February 1st, whatever the future date is. That's when you can buy stock in the company and actually be an owner of good, good. That's what I think it is. I don't know. Nobody told me anything. That would just be my hypothesis in this situation. And would I buy stock in good, good? Should you buy stock in good, good? I would. Why not? I mean, I don't know how much I'd spend, but here's the thing. This is where it gets interesting. And this is why a lot of the guys who leave probably can't talk about too much. If this is the case with an IPO is this, you would own stocks, right? Private companies, you, you, you know, I've been part of private companies that gave the employees stocks. Here's how many shares of the company you own. You own a thousand shares. Great. I own a thousand shares of stock and that's worth nothing because I don't know, but it gets an evaluation from somebody and it's worth something now. And it's worth something based on the equity and the, the amount of money the company makes, which they would know, right? So it would be worth something. Now, when it goes public, all that information about what the company makes becomes public. And then they give you an initial evaluation of what the, uh, the shares are, should be worth or sold for. And then it go, then the IPO comes out, the shares are sold for $5. You own a thousand shares. You now have $5,000 worth of, you know, whatever equity or fake money or money. That's what your shares are worth on the open market. So this could, and those are just speculative numbers. It's uh, they, they would probably own way more shares and the company would be worth way more money. Who knows if that's the case or not, but that's what it, in my opinion, what it would be. And then this is where it gets really interesting after the fact, if that's the case is this is the fact that then all of a sudden, when this happens, you're potentially an overnight millionaire. If you own shares, if you're one of the members of good, good with your amount of stocks that you own, you're like, Whoa, I, I'm rich. Like that could happen. And then that, when that does happen, that does affect people. It, 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 it shakes you up. People act different. So I don't know if that's the case and that's just a speculative thing. We'll see, right? We'll see on January 3rd, what it is, who's right. What do you think it is? But these are my thoughts in terms of, uh, Grant, Micah, 
the conspiracies, sadly, that are out there. I just wanted to address those and what's happening January 3rd. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. See you guys later.